This is the acceptance speech of Mike Brakey to the University of Maine at Orono College of Engineering uh, at the Francis Crow Society induction ceremony that was held Saturday, May 10th, 2014. The title is Connecting the Dots. It runs around 13 minutes. I want to thank the committee for my induction into the Francis Crow Society as a distinguished engineer. Growing up in Maine poverty and being on my own at 16, I was fortunate enough to be blessed with a mixture of good athleticism, street smarts, common sense, and some reasonably good intellect. Coming to the University of Maine in the fall of 1971, I initially was thinking about trying out for the basketball program and getting an education degree in physics to eventually teach and coach at the high school level. As fate would have it, a brilliant high school classmate and friend of mine, Harvey Woodson, shocked everyone in our high school back in 1971, including me, by turning down Harvard College with their boatload of scholarships and becoming my roommate at Orono. Now, Harvey and I had been taking identical classes together since 8th grade in the Gray New Gloucester school system. Knowing my competitive nature, Harvey challenged me to consider taking his major so that, he could con so that we could continue our streak of taking courses together. Always being up for a good challenge, I figured if his major proved too difficult for me, well, I could always drop back down into the easier course of study of education physics the following year. That is how I came to major in engineering physics. Four years later, well, graduation day 1975 is pretty hazy after all these years with one exception, one specific memory that could have been yesterday. I, I wanted to pass it on to each of you. Immediately after graduation, I believe all nine graduating engineering physics majors gathered for one last drink at a local bar before we would begin our individual life's journey. After about 10 minutes of joking and bantering, it suddenly grew very quiet around the barroom table. We, we looked at each other, staring at each other, as if there was some big secret no one dared to say aloud. Then someone whispered it, not to be overheard by other patrons in the barroom. Did we cheat the system, or did the system cheat us? Uh, we all broke into nervous laughter. Each of us still felt unchanged from when we first laid eyes on each other four years earlier in Professor Charles Smith Physics Course 101. Yes, we were older, and we had facts in our heads. But what were we going to face out there in the world, and were we really ready for it? Well, here's my report card 40 years and a dozen jobs later. I discovered my engineering physics major, combined with my heat transfer minor, had helped me develop the talent for working myself out of jobs every couple of years. For example, in 1977, my second position after graduation was as Chief Engineer of Duramax Marine and the International Division of Duramax, Inc. I quickly realized my primary focus was to increase the efficiency of their marine heat exchangers, also known as keel coolers that went underneath the ships and vessels. I also knew I needed to maximize the heat rejection while minimizing the size of the heat exchanger's footprint on the vessel's hull. Thanks to tough, real-life heat transfer problems Orno's Professor James Susick challenged us with in his coursework, coupled with 
my senior year biophysics project involving vortex flow and tubes under Professor James Rooney, I was pleasantly surprised to discover I could immediately roll up my sleeves and get to work. I would eventually design and build a million gallon test facility on corporate campus. Eventually my research would yield a number of worldwide heat exchanger design patents for Duracooler heat exchanger that sometimes that continues to be popular product uh, through the present. At the same time, based on my research, I developed computer sizing programs that allowed each sales associate to instantaneously quote engineered Q cooler design solutions for customers around the world at each of their sales desks. There I go again, working my way out of a job. I now only needed 5% of the prior chief engineer's time at the office to solve day-to-day -day task. Could I finish out my career here and improve my golf game? But I was only 29. Upon learning of quality problems and the high manufacturing scrap losses elsewhere in the corporation, I sat down with management and asked if I could conduct heat transfer studies in those other divisions. My findings in 1991 saved the corporation about $3 million in waste reductions that year. In 1982, I had become the facilities director of the entire corporation at age 30. Over the next 17 years, I would continue to work my way in and out of another nine positions within the corporation in the same manner. I would analyze, simplify, and educate those around me so that someone in my staff could always take over my position should the corporation begin exploring any new technology or business venture that might excite me. This might seem odd that I would continually position myself to lose job security, but I realized early in my career that job security security is a two-edged sword. If you make yourself indispensable in a particular position, you're also likely to be too valuable to promote when a new, exciting, challenging, or, or, or great opportunity comes along. Due to my engineering physics background, I wanted new mental challenges whenever they arose. By the time I hit 39, I had an executive uh, MBA in strategic planning and marketing under me, two international joint ventures completed, and I had traveled all over the globe troubleshooting engineering projects for my corporation. Now at the same time, I saw many associates around me in the corporation who believed they were invaluable to the corporation because they had 20 plus years of work experience. Well, excuse me, in my opinion, they actually had one year's worth of experience repeated 20 plus times. I point this out because as at some point, in time, each of you will eventually have to decide what kind of career path you will follow. At each, as each year passed, I continually asked myself, how can I become more valuable for my next boss? It keeps you on your toes, and you also get the best effort out of your staff around you due to succession planning. In my 23 years at Duramax, Inc., I think there were less than 10 days I ever found myself actually bored. It was a great run. In 1999, at age 47, I founded Breaky Energy, Inc. I initially served as the energy consultant for five local companies that consumed about 40 million kilowatt hours and 200 million cubic feet of natural gas each year. One of those five happened to be my prior uh, company. By 2014, Breaky Energy has grown to over 100 
corporate Ohio clients that consume over 1 billion kilowatt hours of electricity <clears throat> and 3 billion cubic feet of natural gas on an annual basis. Never changing my philosophy throughout my career, I've done it again. I've worked my way out of a job once again at age 60. My oldest son, Matt, at 33, is a great, doing a great job as president of Breaky Energy. Cindy and I help out in times of work overflow and employee training. Other than that, in addition to energy efficiency research at our main lake lodge, I have returned to a passion of my youth, namely writing. I hope to have a book out one day about an amazing physicist named Alvin Weinberg. I am still gathering research for this energy book and screenplay, which will be titled Kid Atlas. To finish things up, our second son, Sean, He's in San Francisco working for an inner city ministry. Our third son, Eric, has spent a couple years in New York City theater before heading up the Ron Paul presidential campaign in Maine back in 2012. Eric is now running for state senate in District 20. If any of you or your relatives live in Auburn, New Gloucester, Poland, Mechanic Falls, and Minot, I hope you check them out. I'm certain he would appreciate your vote. Finally, our youngest son, Stephen, 22, just graduated college last May and is pursuing a theater management career. In closing, what makes this even more remarkable and fulfilling award today is the fact that Harvey Woodson, former classmate, former roommate, and best man at my wedding was inducted into the Francis Crow Society as a distinguished engineer back in 2002. Well, Harvey's here with us today. So the dots have been connected. After 39 years, Harvey and I have come full circle back to the University of Maine, Orono. We have both had remarkable careers to date. I promise you that we have a few more dots to connect before we each become extinguished engineers of the Francis Crow Society. I wish each of you the best of luck as you begin your life, life's career.